there's been a lot of talk about Valorant's anti-cheat known as Vanguard. It gets access to something called Ring Zero and is running on Ring Zero on your computer um, and has excessive access to a kernel. Uh, it runs immediately on boot, meaning if you turn off your computer and start it back up again, the anti-cheat will still run even though you haven't touched or even tried to run Valorant. And even if you shut off Valorant and remove it, it will still be on your computer. And a lot of YouTubers and people that has no experience in programming, some have done their research and stations out the lane, but there's a lot of misinformation. Information. There were some people that even call this a malware, even though they clearly haven't even Googled the definition that malware has to be malicious. And this is not built for malicious. Some people said, oh, why don't they just make it run on a higher ring? When it's very clear they don't understand what the protection rings are in an in operating system, which makes sense. This is not something that you just pick off off the street. Um, I've learned this through numerous courses at the University of Oslo. I'm a group teacher in lower level programming and in, in the class of introduction to data communication and operating system. Um, and this video has even taken longer time to produce than what I wanted it to, because even though I have programmed in assembly and I worked and understand and been teaching, uh, had exams and so on from the University of Oslo in lower level about kernel and different kernel architectures and operating systems. Even then, I didn't feel comfortable actually going in on details. So I asked one of my professors, Carsten Greenwood, which I work with as I'm a, again, a group teacher at the University of Oslo for the Institute for Informatics, and he is my kind of head teacher or the professor of the subject. He's a professor at Digital Infrastructure and Security at the University of Oslo, and he's generally one of the nicest person that I met on the university and just generally really intelligent. So I talked with him about it, and in general, I will break down this kind of stuff. Of course, like and comment on the video, for one, because the thumbnail is probably garbage, because I'm no clue how to make a thumbnail for this. Um, so, and... Please share it around. I think that liking and commenting and sharing this video around is important because even if you think that this is a privacy concern or you think that it's not a privacy concern, doesn't matter your opinion. I still think it's important that everybody gets an introduction and understand at least what they're saying yes to when they are accepting to run Valorant. I think that is the most important thing so people get educated and therefore can make up their own decision. Now, I will explain starting with what is a kernel. Now, the kernel is the interface between the hardware and the software. In the most basic sense, the kernel is just a program, a program that allows your software to actually do something on your hardware. Remember that your computer has a processing unit, it has memory and so on. All of that is just on and off switches of electrical current. It's just ones and zero, right? Zero being off, one being on. And it just does these very, 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 very simple tasks. And it does a lot of them really fast, building up a very complex understanding and being able to do stuff on your computer. Now, your kernel provides stuff like system calls, a virtual file system, uh, device files. Um, it gives you an API, meaning an application programming interface to your hardware and drivers. And it control privileges, which is what we are talking about today. Now, a simple way to look at it is that the kernel is a program that manages your CPU, your memory and your processes on your device. In this example, on your gaming computer. This also uh, includes having all the device drivers. If you want to, for example, access your file system, it has to go through the kernel. Okay, so having direct access to the kernel gives you a lot of freedom on the computer. It does that you can execute code, does that you can write and read from memory, you can run practically anything, you can see and access everything in a very simplistic way of looking at it, in a very what can I say, breakdown way. Now, right now on the screen, you will see a graph of what is known as the protection rings. Now, what is the protection rings? You see, as you can maybe understand, allowing something to just get direct access to your kernel, any program, like for example, something that, you know, Bob underscore x69 hacksaw would give you, a program like that, that he would give you, 
giving him access to run anything on your computer, just literally anything, not, not just like anything as in, oh, something, but anything as in he can program and tell your computer to do any instructions, anything, and it will do it. If he can tell you to go to your computer and just fetch a bunch of data, and it will just do it and send it to him. That would be pretty scary. So we have what is known as the protection rings. Now these starts, there are four rings, and they start on ring number three, ring number two, ring number one, and ring number zero. The closer into the center, meaning rings, the closer to ring zero, or if you are on ring zero, the more privileges, the more access, or the more power you have over a computer, as an easy way of understanding it. Now ring three is normally where a bunch of your applications are laying, and ring zero is where your kernel is. Okay, now this is important to understand. So, however, and, and this... If you, if you sit on ring 3, let's say you have, for example, I'm sitting right now on Audacity uh, to record this video. So to get access, Audacity is on ring 3 because Audacity is just an application. It's just a program um, that runs. It doesn't need closer, it doesn't need more privileges than on ring 3. So Audacity is on ring 3. Now, for example, if this needs to access, for example, this needs to access my input and output devices. It needs to access potentially a file system, right? Because it needs to be able to save and maybe load stuff from my file system. It also needs to take input and output from my microphone, right? So how does it do that? If it is in ring three, but input and output devices and file systems are located, all your drivers, for example, right? All of that is located on ring zero, right? Inside with the kernel. How do you get access to the kernel? Because on ring three, you don't have access to these kind of things. That's the whole point. That Audacity can't just go and check it out themselves. Instead, you need to go through something called the system call interface. Now, I'm not, now, I'm not going to go into stuff like system calls, but all you need to understand is that this is a much safer way. As if your, if your system call is made from an outer ring, the kernel will determine if the user process should be allowed to execute whatever it is trying to do. So when Audacity is telling my computer, hey, I need access to this driver. Hey, I need access to this file system. I can't access that myself because I'm a low scrub ring three program. Then it says, hey, system call interface, my man, uh, can you ask the kernel if I'm allowed to do this? And it whoop over to the kernel. And the kernel's like, huh, you know what? He's allowed to do that. I will give you permission to do that. Here you go. You have now access to exactly that. Nothing more, nothing less. You can do this until my user tells you to fuck off. And if I'm unsure, I might ask my user, hey, this uh, program is trying to get access to this and these uh, features or this and these layers. Hey, is it allowed to do that? Because I'm the kernel and I have no clue if you want this program to be allowed to do that. That's normally when, bada boom administer access needed please click yes right when somebody when it asks for you for for example administer access and you need to click that yes button right stuff like that now that is the protection rings now the anti-cheat that riot is running is running on ring zero meaning it has access to your current meaning it can do whatever the fuck it wants okay and you can't you're not stopping it it's just doing it now is this good or is it bad it's industry standard for a lot of anti-cheats both uh, an but it's called easy anti-cheat and also, BattleEye are both running on ring zero of, the, uh, of this layer. So, it is all of these normal anti-cheats also do the same thing. Because if you want to stop cheaters, or hack developers, or whatever you want to call them, that are making cheats that run on ring zero, which also, you know, does that if you are ever thinking about buying a cheat, remember that some of those cheats you are actually giving access to ring zero of your computer and I don't know if I would trust somebody that developed hacks to have that kind of access to my computer but that's for a completely different story if you develop hacks and you want you want them to access memory so then a lot of people then develop them on ring zero and to combat that they put their anti cheats also have access to ring zero so they can see stuff like if they are creating a multiple thread if they're trying to access different areas of memory and there's all kinds of technical stuff that's happening but the point is that no random YouTuber, you can't just push the push the anti-cheat up a couple of layers. That is not how it works. There's a they didn't and, and they, for, there was somebody, I think they called your Valorant. They they posted this video and they said like, oh, this is probably some mistake that is just made by the dev team. You just you don't accidentally give it in kernel privileges. It's not like, it's like, uh, if anti-cheat, then go to ring zero. Oh, I meant ring three. Sorry, mistype. 
That's not how it works. This is not an accident. It is intended by design because they need to do it to be able to have a robust anti-cheat. Normally, they have one on ring zero and they have wrong on ring three. One, the ring zero gives an internal perspective for the anti-cheat and the ring three one gives an external perspective of what processes are being created for the anti-cheat. Combining that can make it difficult to develop cheats. Now, therefore, shouldn't be worried. Okay, I get it. However, this runs on boot, and that is the one thing that some people seem to be worried about. Because that essentially means that you have what is known as a root kit, because that's what it is. It is a root kit. It has access to your root. Now, this is something that freaks people the fuck out, because when you hear root kit, you think hacking. But a root kit doesn't need to be malicious. Again, dear YouTubers, just because it is a root kit, if you just read the definition of a root kit, it is a lot of time for malicious intent. But that does not mean that devs are not making it for legitimate purposes. When you trust the person that is giving you the rootkit or this, the anti-cheat, you trust Riot or whatever, then okay, then it's fine that they have this access because they need it to do stuff. There's a reason you have access and you are able to get access to layer zero. If there was, if you, if there was no reason, so like programming-wise, outside of viruses, to be able to need access to the inner ring, then why would the inner ring even be a thing that you could get access to that easily? If that makes sense. So, no, you can't just push it further up. Now, again, this rootkit runs 24-7, even if Valorant is not running. And you can say that that's an invasion of privacy, and there can be a bunch of potential security risks. Yes, there can. Now, if I think that Riot is going to hack your computer or do anything malicious, makes no sense that it would. Some people were say, citing user data and were citing that they, are in, in, you know, that they are owned by Tencent. I'm not going to go into that political discussion right now. I'm looking at this from a developer standpoint and from a business standpoint when it comes to that. Riot, if Riot got caught doing some shady business on your computer, one, there's a pretty big chance they would get fined because that's not legal. If they were starting to, 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 for example, steal user data, which they were not allowed to steal, because that goes against the GDPR in, the, in Europe, and they get fined a lot of money for doing shit like that. And number two, they will lose the trust of their user base, which is significantly more expensive. So for the risk versus the reward for them doing something is not that big. Now, then the issue, of course, comes with, uh, which if you work in IT security, you probably thought this immediately when you heard that, okay, we trust the, we, we trust the guy that is, you know, the authority that gives us this rootkit. We trust them. But what if they get compromised? And that is, of course, the issue that we have. If Riot gets fucked and gets hacked by some guy and some guy gets access and can uh, take these anti-cheat rootkit and edit it so that it can read our files, so that it will send data to him, and push that update out. Everybody updates their game because they want to play. And bada bing, bada boom. Evil bad guy Hacksaw now has access to your computer. From a rootkit. That's not really nice. That is not really good. Now, how safe is Riot? Riot says they have done independent testers. They've been done independent studies. I have not... And again, I cannot talk from that perspective. And this is where I put the question out to you. Personally, I am not uninstalling Valorant. If I... And for some reason, taking a break from Valorant, or if the closed beta is over, I will most likely remove Vanguard from my computer. That's just something that I like to do. Uh, you don't even need to do that, because it doesn't, according to Riot, and I trust that company, it does not gather information, it does not look at you in that way, it's not spyware of any type, it's not keylogging you, or any bullshit like that. It's not looking at your passwords, which rootkits can, they can look at passwords. It's not doing any of that. And if they want to do it, as I understand it, they then need to patch their code and push out an update. And if they do that, well, well then, then that's a complete different discussion. However, I don't think Riot will do that. And I personally don't think that they will get compromised with a breach because it's not just about getting access. It's getting access, changing the code, and somehow pushing out that. And it's not just, as I understand it from what I've talked with game devs, it is not just click push. It's not like GitHub where you just like add dot uh, git commit dash m uh, added virus and then git push. Like it's not it's not like pushing it to a GitHub. It is a more rigorous process pushing out an update. Um, and it's not just to easily do that. And as I understand it, then if you even even if you could breach into Riot, the change that would need to be made is very significant. Now, again, 
This is where I leave the question to you. If you don't trust Riot, or if you're uncomfortable that this is happening, well then, of course, there's a bunch of other also other anti-cheats that you might want to take a look at, because most of them have access to Ring Zero. However, if you're not comfortable with that, then of course, in between you playing Valorant, you can disable this by just removing it from your computer, and reinstalling it, and then rebooting your computer next time you play Valorant. That is something you can do. Riot could make something to maybe disable it, and then forcing you to restart your computer manually, so you don't have to do this and maybe automate the system for you if you want to. That would be really nice of them because there are some uh, security concerns. However, I don't see them um, doing that. And I don't understand from a business standpoint why they would implement something like that. Um, so this is where I leave the question to you. And ask you to please like and comment and share this video around so we can share this information. I tried to break this down in a, a finding a middle ground with explaining some of the technical terms compared to explaining also uh, keeping it general enough, not showing you models of different kernels and shit like that, that has nothing to do with this video. Um, so I try to breach a middle ground and I spend a long time doing this, uh, reaching out to people, talking with people. Um, so I hope you liked it and I hope that this helped and hopefully informed you a little bit and calmed people down. Um, be uh, critical of what you hear from YouTube. If a YouTuber says, I have no technical expertise in this field and then immediately start stating facts, then you might want to take that with a very big pinch of salt. For example, I will call out your Valorant, which is clearly fucking the channel, that made a topic on this. Don't go and give him views, don't go and give him the hate or dislikes. But that's the type of videos where he calls this a malware. Which makes absolutely no sense, because it's not a malware. Because it's not a malicious virus. That's not how anything works. Anyway, I will be done rambling. Thanks so much for watching, liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. Please do take care of this. Stay positive. I love you guys very, very much. Stay inside. Wash your hands. As always, my name has been Jonal, and you guys keep the enemy in your process.